Now we're going to uh, invite questions. <clears throat> uh, talking about meta-narrative and interconnection of definitions in different culture, uh, can we s can we can uh, does it mean that people should uh, refuse their religious rituals uh, in order to um, for universal idea for universalism? Well, see, some people would say that as we have dialogue related to our various meta narratives, that we all eventually have a coming together. And so we all become sort of one, that, that the differences get erased as we listen to each other, and my meta narrative changes and yours changes somewhat, and finally we find we're singing from one meta narrative. In my journey, I've not found that that is true. Um, I think rather what happens is that a person will convert to another meta narrative. For example, the Kikuyu meta narrative that the first Kikuyu couple, Mumbi and Bumbi, came from a fig tree, you see. That meta narrative does not fit with the biblical meta narrative, that we did not come from a fig tree, that each tribe does not have its different god that it came from. That is not true to the biblical meta-narrative at all. The biblical meta-narrative says God created Adam and Eve in his own image, and they are the parents of all humanity. That's the biblical meta-narrative. It doesn't fit with the Kikuyu meta-narrative. And so what happens among the Kikuyu, as, and I taught at the university there, students who were informed by the Kikuyu meta-narrative, I would teach them the biblical meta-narrative, that God created Adam and Eve the first parents of all humankind in his own image, you know. I would teach them that in the classroom, and they would say, wow, you see. And many chose to embrace the biblical meta-narrative. So they left their Kikuyu meta-narrative to embrace the biblical meta-narrative. Um, that's the way it, it, it normally happens. Now, some people, like, like you said, will try to sort of marry the two different, three different meta narratives together. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's called syncretism, that approach. And uh, as I see it, it doesn't work. I have many, many dialogues with Muslims, you know. And Muslims will say uh, their meta narrative is that the angel Gabriel brought the Quran down to Muhammad. That's the meta narrative. We'll talk more about that when we get to Islam. Um, the biblical meta-narrative is that God so loved that he sent his son. Those are very different meta-narratives. Did God send a person or a book? You see, it's not the same meta-narrative at all. And so in my dialogue with Muslims, like with this Katalega that I wrote a dialogue with, we talk about those differences and the implications of those differences. But the moment Katalega says, I believe that God so loved that he sent his son, he has become a Christian. He's not a Muslim anymore. And the day I would say, I believe that God sent the Quran down through the angel Gabriel, I'm then a Muslim. I'm not a Christian anymore, you see. That I've made a change to another meta-narrative. Uh, I think that's a much more healthy way to look at it than to think that somehow they all sort of come together at the end of the day. No, I don't, I don't believe that. I don't believe that, yeah. as, I observe, as I observe it. Good question. Very good question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, here, just addition to this question. For example, if uh, we have Holy Supper here in um, Christian Orthodox um, or and Protestant uh, churches, we usually uh, use bread, bread. And for example, if we are in China, should we replace it? For them if and they don't eat bread there. For example, for they eat rice. Should we? Uh, take rice instead of bread, like this kind of question. Is it possible? Or when, you're, it with important? The or when you're with the Somali people, should you take camel's milk <laughs> instead exactly. of wine? Because they have nothing to do with wine. You know. <laughs> well, those are the questions that the local church needs to decide, and in consultation with others as well. So uh, we can't sit here in a classroom uh, in the center of Russia and decide what they will do in China. But uh, the Christian faith, gives freedom for uh, discerning what you will eat and what you will drink when you share the, the communion. Um, 
there's, there's, a, there's that flexibility within the Christian movement. With our Muslim friends, the, the ritual prayers are always done the same way in Muslim communities all over the world. In the Christian movement, we pray in many different ways, you see. So within the Christian movement, there's this emphasis on worshiping God in spirit and in truth. And so the exact form of the ritual is not terribly important within the Christian tradition. Yeah, you know, there's a good bit of flexibility there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, here's the last question. Uh, you were talking about different tribes in Africa and about different countries. They have uh, certain definitions of God or certain idea of God. Are there some tribes and countries, um, for example, in Africa, which know, which have no definition of or idea of God? Or some I'm not aware of any such tribe in Africa. And I'm not aware of any such tribe anywhere in the world. It's amazing that wherever, wherever the missionary movement goes and they begin to work at translating the Bible into the local language, how that almost always a local name for God is found. Uh, the exception to that would be in Buddhist societies because Buddhism uh, Buddha was an agnostic. In fact, in reality, he was an atheist. He did not believe that there's, he did not, had no awareness, as he explains in his philosophy, that there is a creator God. And he thought, a creator God, we don't need him anyway. That would be the Buddhist understanding. In that case, what Bible translators do is to go and investigate the language before Buddhism came. And my impression is that with almost no exceptions, in those Buddhist societies where they go to the pre-Buddhist language, they find a name for God. And so that's the name they use in their Bible translations because Buddhism itself doesn't contribute any thought about a creator God. Yeah, very good question. And of course, Christians believe that this is an indication that God has planted in everyone's soul, in every society, a sign of truth uh, and signs of truth. And one of those signs would be an awareness of a creator God, although they might not know much about him. Like the Kikuyu, like the uh, Zanaki that my father and mother lived with, they would say, yes, we know about God the creator, but we don't know much about him because he went on a journey. But they used that name for God that they knew something about. Good questions, okay. Thank you. Tomorrow, next round of questions, okay? <laughs> now, these are very helpful <coughs> questions. I appreciate that very much. Mm -hmm. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com.